Thank you everyone for tuning in. It's the HWBOT World Tour 2016 live stream. Uh, we are here in the face of just before uh, the match will start. This is Bull Shooter. He will face his opponent, uh, Extreme Addict, that is coming back to the stage right now. I will leave the microphone to the judge uh, here, Christian Ney, that is doing an awesome job at making sure that everything is all right. And uh, they will have the draw for the benchmark. Don't. First one, first try physics. Okay. Okay. So the bench is going to be fire strike physics. Pull out. And here we are back. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to the SWBot World Tour 2016. This is the face-off of day four between Extreme Addict and Bull Shooter. We are about ready to go on the match. We will just wait for Christian Ney to launch the game. Okay, you guys ready? So we start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Good luck. Here we are. They have 30 minutes to go into this match. They are doing Fire Strike Extreme. They need to do the best score on Fire Strike Extreme Physics. This will depend mostly on the CPU. Thank you everyone for joining in into this stream of the HWBot World Tour 2016. And we are here in Taipei, Taiwan, and we have the day four face-off between Bull Shooter and Extreme Addict. These two overclockers know each other quite well. Extreme Addict is from Poland, while Bull Shooter is from Germany. Bull Shooter was actually at the event at the HWBot World Tour 2016 in Germany. In, uh, in Europe, so he was actually uh, already competing for that. He already got his tickets to go to the HWBOT World Championship. He is competing today to actually be uh, on top of his game to win 1000 USD tomorrow uh, if he managed to qualify tonight against Bullshooter. We have here in uh, the judge Christian Ney uh, from Switzerland, is uh, the head judge at HWBOT. He's making sure that everything is going all right in this competition. In the next 30 minutes, the guys have to do the best score in Fire Strike ex in the Fire Strike Extreme Physics score. So only the Physics score will count toward the final ranking. Both of the overclockers are now cooling down the system. Uh, in the, when they start the game, they have to be above a negative temperature. So they have to be in positive temperature before even starting the, uh, the match. Once the match is started, they can cool down their, uh, their computers and make sure that everything works well. All of the overclockers uh, got information before uh, to just have the draw of the benchmark. We did in the live and they had their uh, system ready just before the live and they're using the X99 CSOC champion motherboard from Gigabyte. Ah, blue screen. No, je l'ai vu. <laughs> <laughs> Extreme Addict is dialing into the BIOS.
setting up some voltages. CPU V core 1.55, CPU ring voltage at 1.5. Both of the overclockers are now trying to set up and get their first score, but for now, we don't have any information yet on what the system can do. We are already 4 minutes into that game, there is only 26 minutes left. As you can see, they, can, uh, they have to torch and uh, cool down the CPU and tell them they have to torch. This is because it, this is extreme overclocking. They have to reach out the best possible performances with their computer. The most difficult part here is there's a limitation in what the CPU can do uh, in terms of sustaining extreme temperature for that. We're using liquid nitrogen, negative 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is extremely, extremely cold and sometimes it's too cold for actually the systems to work. So we have to uh, rely on the torching. That's what we call torching to heat up a little bit the system. Here we have the two overclockers back in their system for the first time. Uh, we can see Extreme Addict is uh, dialing in in some of the uh, settings for the memory. This, uh, this CPU benchmark is uh, supposed to be a 3D benchmark, but we are only using the physics core. So the physics is just part of the calculation from the CPU. They are all using the Intel Core i7 6950X, the latest Broadwell E CPU. And we will see how they perform. This is a 10 core CPU and they will be clocking that one at above 5 GHz today. None of the overclocker managed to have uh, their first run, but Extreme Addict is going. This is the first run from Extreme Addict. Let's see that into the details. As you can see, the 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme uh, rendering is based out of some of these flying spider going around. You will have uh, information and then to have uh, an, uh, the screen that will XA come back. So we have the first core of this match by Extreme Addict. 31,662 points. As you can see, the guys are at negative 100 C right now. And I've been joined by Lee Goft, our overclocking expert that was actually just uh, trying to compete earlier today uh, in the, the standard. He's our overclocking expert and will tell you all the details about what's uh, coming in this match. Hi, Lee Goft, how are you doing? <laughs> Fine, man. Finally made it. Still uh, overclocking the GTX 480. So Massman took over. So uh, he better produce some good scores for me. Otherwise, no stake tonight. <laughs> So as you can see, the two overclockers are uh, now... XA, 32,515. So XA add a new score. This is the second score of this match. We are about seven minutes in the game. But this is interesting to see that Bullshooter already have the experience of this one versus one match. It did uh, actually qualify for the AWBOT World Championship already in, uh, in the event in Europe at the Gamers Assembly. Oh, and we got the blue! screen the first blue screen of the competition oh, oh, oh that was so close we almost had a second one but the system <laughs> went down before i suspect extreme addict to actually press the reset button faster that i can see the blue screen yeah maybe he had the flask and the torch in the hand so he couldn't do it all at once but indeed they, they have to push the cpu really to its limit for this physics test so uh, it's a part of the 3d benchmark in general and one part test is let's say fully the graphics card, the second part fully the memory subsystem and the processor, and then there's like the combined test doing both the graphics card and the so CPU and subsystem. So they only have to do like uh, at this moment, so the CPU and memory. So both have to be dialed in pretty, pretty hard. 
So we think we saw Extreme Addict already at 5,250 megahertz. And, and we've seen people like Evolve as well on the Extreme boot. Like on, on Tuesday, we were only benching at 5, 5.1-ish. And now they're already like reaching 5,300 megahertz. Identical CPUs, just, uh, let's say, having more knowledge and more experience on how they clock. We are here at the HWBot World Tour 2016 Asia at the Computex and we are seeing the daily face-off of day 4 between Bull Shooter and Extreme Addict. These two guys are from Europe, they are part of the top 10 uh, overclockers in Europe. Actually, Extreme Addict is currently number 2 best overclocker in the world and it is the second time this week that he's competing in front of the audience. And indeed, that both both players are, let's say, uh, acquainted with the gigabyte board. Something we have seen in the few days. Uh, some players really had to adapt to an unknown motherboard, unknown BIOS. But Bullshooter has been benching gigabyte a lot, and I think Extreme Addict even won the gigabyte five gigahertz competition at HW Bot. So both know, let's say, the board inside out. But that was with Haswell E, so the previous CPU generation, and not Broadwell E. There are a little bit more fine tuning to do, but I think these guys will master it. Bullshooter just needs to get a setup like properly booting and, and get a score done. We are almost nine minutes into this game. Only Extreme Addict have a score of 32,515 points, while Bullshooter is still struggling into the BIOS to, to dial in the right settings for him to do his placeholder score. So, what is a placeholder score on the League of? Yeah, in fact, it's the first score that you put down. Usually, it's it's a safe score, so something like uh, safe clocks that you can straight boot into the windows and just like r do a run. This puts you usually like a little bit more pressure on on your competitor because uh, if you're like first, like XA was, then the other one has already like a target, and if he gets a score and it's way lower, yeah, then there's XA a lot of work. Say thirty-three thousand and seventy-two. So XA indeed pushing it, and, and this is really his ball game, in fact. He's like really good in memory dialing, tweaking, and yeah, I think Frank really wants to maybe defend his, his, his victory at the MSI MOA of, for the tours in, in France, but uh, it's not going that well at this moment. So he finally made it into Windows, so let's see uh, what frequencies he can run. I, I saw that Extreme Addict is actually benching at 5.3 gigahertz. This is actually one of the uh, fastest CPU we have seen this week. There is uh, the CPU are usually doing between 5.1 and 5.3 gigahertz, and uh, they are all pretty much the same today. Uh, all these uh, Core i7 6950X are pretty much clocking the same, but they have to dial in this very specific memory timing, the Zadak 511 memories that we are being uh, using here. Indeed, Bullshooter is going for a 5 gig gigahertz run, so maybe he's just trying to find out what this CPU can do for him. And hopefully it will keep bring him a little bit into the game, because yeah, without a score, you're staying second. We are here at the HWBot World Tour 2016 in Asia. We are at the biggest IT trade show here in Asia called the Computex. And this is all blue screen from Extreme Addict. That is the one that we missed just earlier, and now we have it live for you guys. Finally, Bullshooter is now benching. Uh, he's uh, cancelling his run. He's not finishing his run completely. Sometimes that is uh, is torching. Maybe he, have, he wants to control the temperature because this uh, the systems need to be in between a certain range of temperature. Otherwise, it won't work. If it's too hot, the system will crash. If it's too cold, the system will crash as well. Yeah, indeed, and I, I think he he did a similar run at uh, the Poitiers when he faced Dan Kopp, so Germany's current number one and even number one in the world. And yeah, okay, he Bullshitter was lucky then that he had the only working setup, but he had, yeah, he should be, be aware of what is going on with this 3D mark thing. He really needs to find a way to clock up his CPU and, and get it running. Like most subtests, like with these 10 cores, the, the, the tests are really short, so... It, it's not like the, that they lose a lot of time running it. It takes like maybe half a minute max and then you have a score. But the setup, of course, has to be stable. So again, in the BIOS for Bull Shooter, adjusting the memory timings, putting them as tight as possible to get like the best performance in the 3D Mark physics. 
every time the guys have to dial in into the BIOS, they have to restart the motherboard, get into the BIOS, change the settings, save in, restart, and then went into the win into Windows. This is actually taking a lot of time, especially in these 30 minutes matches, because it's been already 13 minutes we are in this match, and not everything can happen from now. But Extreme Addict is in the lead, in the lead by far, because Bullshooter doesn't have a score yet. Yeah, if, if, if I wasn't in Frank's play, so bullshit, or I, I would just like do a run. Maybe save on the timings and, and just try to find in Windows. Because with this platform, you can even adjust the memory timings inside the operating system, which is kind of unique, unique. We had that with Ivy Bridge as well and Haswell E, but like uh, the latest Skylake and stuff, we all have to do it via the BIOS. So this is like easy benching, maybe, Crewfront, if we can call it like that. <laughs> I don't think Bullshit will be entertained that we're like on his nerves. Oh, you missed one, you missed one, you missed no, one. No, 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 that is a... Oh, no, oh, no it. 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 <laughs> That was a blue screen from Bullshit. <laughs> he gave us that weird look. I don't think he's like really entertained that we're like messing with his head. <laughs> Maybe also that one of the world's best overclockers from Sweden, Jon Elmore, has joined us like to watch the new talents around the front row. Hey, Jon. Come on, Frank, you have to give us one score, man. You have to really show that you're worth to go to Berlin, even by cap. <laughs> oh, we just saw that uh, Extreme Addict add some change of the settings, some special tweaks. You can see that this is actually running a little bit um, like uh, with more pixels than it used before. This is one of the special tweaks he's using to get a higher score in uh, 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme Physics. As we are saying, we are only using uh, the physics settings. This oh, and we got a blue screen. I think he said the German word for the English word that began with an F and ended on a K. <sighs> yeah, it's not going well uh, because I, it's it's really weird that, that that he knows the board. In fact, Frank has benched a lot on Gigabyte and. Really weird that maybe it, it's just up to the timings of the memory that he cannot get it properly working. And that it's like really unstable whenever he wants to fire up a benchmark. So where we are Truth, almost reaching halfway. So Extreme Addict way in the lead, 30,000, 33,000, sorry, 72. And Frank still has to post up his first score. But like I said, anything can happen. We have seen like these games like completely turn around. Once the other guy gets it set up like sort of working, it can go really, really, really fast. So as you can see, Extreme Addict is already back into the system. Is adjusting his um, his frequency is at 5.3 gigahertz. He's using the strap 125, increased by actually 1.25 uh, BCLK. That means 126 by 42, you can get to 5.3 gigahertz. This is very interesting to see that he's using um, a lower multiplier but a higher strap. This can uh, he can access uh, higher memory timings. He can higher uh, access uh, higher uh, memory frequencies, and you can also uh, higher, um, have a uh, higher frequency in uh, the uh, CPU. Yeah, indeed, and this is something that you have to do on the Gigabyte board. Uh, I've been using it also quite well. I'm usually more acquainted to the, to the Asus ones, and with the Gigabyte, to get the memory really working, indeed, you have to use the 125B clock. Frank in the setup now. Just safe booting at 4,500 feet, probably it's will safe, have... 33,299. Okay, still uh, adding another 220 points. So XA still improving, not waiting for his competitor to like catch up. Just just staying in the lead and putting more and more. Oh, we had a blue screen here. We need slower CPU so that we can see this, <laughs> the blue screen like way longer displayed. Would be more pay more entertaining. But this is no no fun game for bullshooter at this moment. Unable to 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 keep the setup stable and maybe one of the memory dims is like really not not liking the cold because it's like really close to the to the ln2 pot it could be that indeed that it, it, it has some instability and it could be that he just needs to run with like way lower memory sp speed to get it like sort of stable we can see that xtreme addict did his special trick once again oh blue screen if I was you, Truthman, I wouldn't say that too much because XA has a torch and he can do like evil things with that. <laughs> really be careful. 
So that was a question on the live chat. What is this? This is extreme overclocking. The guys here are pushing their computer to the very edge of stability. They have to reach out for the best possible score they can. And they're sometimes using liquid nitrogen like here today, but they're sometimes using the blowtorch as well. Sometimes the computer doesn't work when it's too hot. Sometimes the computer doesn't work when it's too cold. So you have to adjust to all of that. Yeah, indeed, it's, it's not a, an, an easy thing to do. And it's like we've said, like we experienced Broadwell E most of us like first timer on, on Tuesday when Intel released it and like we said we're already increasing the clocks that we can run on Tuesday with almost like 200 to 250 megahertz so yeah we're getting there so hopefully we'll see more CPUs also the retail ones because we're using these early engineering samples and usually we have like a after a few months of production that these CPUs will just get better and better and hopefully we can reach higher clock as well so Frank on his first run and it, it crashed again so something is really not stable with uh, with the memory timings. This is all about the placeholder. You know, he's already qualified for the HWBot World Championship, but he still is in the in the race for the win of the 1000 USD that will be awarded tomorrow if, uh, afternoon to the winner of this HWBot World Tour 2016 here in Asia. Yeah, but it's also all about prestige. Now you you got that ticket, you won the MSI MOA in France, and, and now you're like not even getting a score done. So yeah, it's, it's like when you, you buy that high-end car and you don't even get, get it to fire up to put it in gear. That's like, come on. Extreme Addict is pushing the CPU to the very limit. He's at almost at 5,350 uh, 5, megahertz. This is actually quite impressive for the CPU at this level in the competition. Yeah, Extreme Addict is also like this. He is not afraid of to push like any voltages. Uh, if I think if you buy yourself like 1,800 euro CPU, I think it would be maybe a little bit more, let's say, scarce on, on, on the voltages and just keep them a little bit in, in, in the safe zone, if you can call it like that, because we're like really pushing hard. But yeah, I think he shows his nickname well. Extreme is extreme and there's no in way in between. So indeed, guys, uh, these benchmarks that you see are, uh, let's say, developed by FutureMark. Are they Swedish, Finnish, Danish? I think it's from Finland. From Finland, yeah. And we've seen some of the guys walking around, and usually they use in, in these uh, benchmarks already, let's say, the techniques of upcoming games. Now, Firestrike is not that new, but it, indeed, it, it pushes your graphics card really to the limit already. And the fun thing is these are free minutes. downloadable. So approach it at 10 minute mark and uh, yeah, Bull Shooter, hopefully he can set like a 32-ish score soon so he can put a little bit pressure on his Polish friend on his left hand side. We are two third into the game and Bull Shooter doesn't have a score yet. This is extremely hard for him. We can see that. He, let's hope that this run will go through. That would be the first uh, time for Bullshitter to get a score. And he's like, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't understand why this is that so. Something, something is wrong. Yeah, it, it, it setup is really not stable enough to complete to complete like a, a part of the run. So probably something about the memory timing done right. And I've experienced this well. I have a new CPU today. It's not a new CPU. It's a used one. And and I couldn't run like uh, the memory as tight as, as on the one I had yesterday. So sometimes you have to make like sacrifices to just to get it up and running and, and try to have as much fun as you can. On the other side of the table, we have Extreme Addict that is pushing again the system to the limit. Let's see if we can put 124 in BCLK, 40 in the core multiplier. Is at 1.61 volt of V core. Let's see if you want to push it a little bit more to get more performances out of his CPU. Yeah, and this test is all about pushing the CPU as hard as possible. The, the the test is in fact on the CPU is not as harsh as for example, the 2D benchmarks that we could run multi-threaded wise, like Cinebench or, or, or even the XTU one. That's why XA probably is able to push the CPU really higher than, than we have done on maybe the qualifying, which was mostly 2D. And I think for uh, XA, it's also very important that he can compete tomorrow. Otherwise, he, uh, he wasn't able to qualify for the G-Skill boot. So they're doing the World Overclocking Series over there. And, and this was like his only shot to get indeed some cash back home to Poland. So And hopefully he can pull it off and maybe tomorrow again. Because Frank is really in, in, in a bad position at this moment to get it like up and running. And he's like, uh, I think the body language says enough that he's like having all these issues and, and, and just tries to... Yeah, to, to get a run done. 
Don't forget that Xumatic was competing yesterday in the day face-off against Dan Cup. That was number one overclocker versus number two overclocker in the world. And sadly, Dan Cup actually, uh, sadly for Xtreme Addicts, Dan Cup was uh, strong in the scores and he managed to crush him and, uh, and get his way to, to Saturday's uh, competition. Xtreme Addict has his second chance today. That's the time for him to take it. Okay, Bullshooter is running, finally up and running, and hopefully this can complete now, because otherwise I think it will be a... Oh gosh, he just shut it down himself. He, he pulled down the, the power supply, or what, what, what yeah, happened? Yeah, he pulled down the, he pulled down the computer. Hmm. Maybe if somebody passes by, he will hand over all the hardware and just get it like a cigarette break outside. <laughs> <laughs> And XA is, uh, yeah, still still continuing to to explore, let's say, the the, the extreme limits of of his hardware, and still wanting to 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 get it done, and, and just push that little bit harder. It's also extra training for him because he has to perform tomorrow if he wins this final on this particular board as well. That's something that we forgot to mention. So each day we had like a, a main board manufacturing uh, sponsoring, let's say, or providing the main boards. And today is, is gigabyte day. So if he does, uh, let's say the competition, he enters the competition tomorrow, he has to use the gigabyte X99 SOC champion. Right, Andrew? Andrew agrees. We are 6 minutes and 10 seconds in this match here, the daily face of day 4 at the HWBOT World Tour 2016 in Asia. Let's see if Xtreme Addict will make it to tomorrow's uh, qualifier, but it's, it looks like it will make it because at this at this point, Bull Shooter doesn't even have a placeholder score. A placeholder score is a score you do at almost default settings just to make sure that everything can run smoothly on your system. So uh, we have just uh, on the pass by the winner of the G-Scale Overclocking World Series, Mr. Splave. So Bullshooter not able to get any score done. Extreme Addict still pushing, 33,239. This is extremely difficult at this level for the guys to you know, make sure that they can, you know, um, get on stage, prepare, get the right CPU, get the right CPU clock to uh, to go on the, on the on the system, and you know they have to push to the limits. You know, everything is so close to the edge. They really have to make sure that everything can be stable for at least the time for the run. And indeed, uh, I think uh, Bullshooter switched operating system because like he's like reinstalling uh, all the stuff to get like the Firestrike score running hopefully a little bit more stable than he has before. He has not been able to pull one down to get it like one properly done. Always like crashing, failing, rebooting. And indeed, I think his setup is really not, not, not stable at this moment. That's the thing. Every time you restart, you lose precious seconds. Every time you have to switch the OS, you lose precious time as well. This is extremely um, time consuming for both of the overclockers. On yeah, the other side of the table, actually, you have Xtrematic that is still pushing to the limit, like bits by bits, to make you no, know, to try to go to uh, the last, uh, the last few uh, bits of his uh, of his CPU. Yeah, and then Frank is now trying to fire up the fire strike and then see if he can get a run done. He should at least produce one score, now. Even how bad it is, even at stock, <laughs> do something. Just, just, just make your fans happy because there are a lot of people f cheering on to Frank and and saying like, what's going on? They really want to know what 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 is going on. It's too bad that we cannot, let's say, talk to the guys. Then we could have maybe like any idea of of what his issues are. So here we go, Bullshooter doing his fire strike score for physics. There's definitely something wrong with this system. It's like, oh my god, so <laughs> oh my god, this is taking ages to just load. What is wrong Remains. with this? <laughs> you put in the dual core CPU, maybe Frank, you for, and didn't do the, the the ten core one. You took the wrong motherboard, maybe doing the Pentium G3258. Yeah, there's definitely something going wrong with the board. Maybe some condensation or, or something. Uh, sometimes it's really unpredictable. We have seen it. At the same time in Paris, where, where Dancop was not even able to boot into the operating system, not even at stock clock, something went wrong with the SATA controller, so the PCIe H lanes, and, and yeah, this is all about overclocking, and the thing is they have to 
use or reuse the same motherboard. Xtubedding is taking it slowly for the next three minutes because he knows he have a lot of advances above 33k points and Bullshooter still doesn't have a place under the stress is on Bullshooter today. Extreme Addict is just not pushing still just for just for fun to see if he can improve its score. But Bullshooter, you need at least a score. You need at least a score and you have two minutes and fifteen seconds left for that. Please my friend, do one at least one score for the day of of today. Yeah, if I was someone just would boot like, I don't know, very low memory strap and 5 gigahertz into the operating system, just press run and that's it. At least you have defended yourself maybe a little bit, but it's not much. Too bad. Too bad for this game because this could have been like a really, really interesting show off. Bullshooter already has his ticket for Berlin, so there is no, in fact, no, no, no extra value besides the extra 30 minutes training that he could do here. But yeah, for XA, yeah, he's into the game for tomorrow so maybe surprise surprise he will may meet all the other guys the all the winners of the previous world tour stops in berlin so the guys today are competing to access the semi-final tomorrow and uh, we will know tomorrow at the end one, of the day who can win one the minute and ticket. 20 seconds and this is the fun thing xa is not giving up even though he, he can be maybe already like be pretty assured that uh, there will be not be like that much coming from, let's say, the red corner, but um, we never know. It can be done in, in, in a matter of seconds. If Bullshooter fires up the benchmark or starts the benchmark in the final seconds, we have to allow it to complete the run. If the score is better, then yeah, he wins. He wins this game. As anyway, long as the benchmark is launched before the end of the timer, the score will valid. Indeed. But anyway, even if Bullshooter wins, in fact, XA goes to the semi-finals, I think, on Saturday, huh? because Bullshooter is already qualified for Berlin. It will continue on doing it up to the cash, and uh, the, the ticket will be awarded to the next one. Mm -hmm. So can he get a score? 22,009 Bullshooter. Yeah! Finally, man, Woo! finally, 20 seconds just before the end, you finally get a score 32k009. This is uh, still below the one from Extreme Addict, seconds, but sorry. there is just 10 seconds nine, left. Eight, seven, he just has to press six, start now. Five, Where is it? Four, Where is it? He can't three, find it. He can't find two, it. One. Zero. It, oh. This okay or not? Ah, uh, nah. Uh, Christian A, nah. You, you, you cannot mess with this guy. He mother is the, the main or the head moderator at, at HW bot and yeah, Bullshitter was like maybe half a second too late to fire up the run and have to start the benchmark. Too bad for him. XA, he claims this victory. Well done, man. Congratulations to Xtreme Addict is uh, winning this day four face off. The two overclockers were facing on the core i7 6950X on Firestrike Extreme Physics. They had to do the best physics score with any uh, with no limitation in the CPU frequency. Uh, that was interesting to see. Sadly, a bull shooter had uh, no score like almost up until the end, like just 20 seconds before the end, he managed to do the first score. This is what it is super important for the placeholder. Fire up, do a score, then you have your press order, and then build up and continue on that. Yeah, and, and the, the main thing is, of course, yeah. Maybe we could also ask Bullshooter later on, just, just to ask him maybe what went wrong, if he has any idea at this moment. Because, it's, like I said, he's been benching the Gigabyte board, like, all week. So he should have, like, maybe, like, he can do, like, a really rapid intervention or intervenience and in the BIOS, set all the main timings to get, like, a sort of a, a safe CPU speed running and, and then just improve and slowly tweak his way into it. So, guys, if you have any questions on the Twitch channel, feel free to ask. We're here at the HWBot Asia World Tour doing five continents and seven events. Here is the winner or day four, Extreme Addict. Extreme Addict from Poland, congratulations to you. You did great today. You're now qualified to go on the semi-final tomorrow to make sure everything, you can compete to get the golden ticket. The, the head admin is still uh, overviewing, like Chris, Christian Ney is overviewing people should to set up to see like, 
was there something missing in, in, in the operating system or, or how how is it possible that, that the benchmark always crashed? I think it's really instability. Something in with one of the memory modules was not 100% right. Maybe some condensation, maybe some ice on, on the ICs. And yeah, he couldn't pull it off until the final seconds. My dear Ligo, that was a quite impressive game. I never saw that, uh, that oh no, an overclock to wait that long to submit a score. Uh, he ran actually into a lot of issues today. Bull Shooter ran into a lot of issues today. This is sad for him, but this is the game, you know, with only 30 minutes of match. You never know what could happen in this uh, 30 minutes. And most of the time, you usually have stuff like this that can happen. Basically, you can run into issues. You can run into uh, either memory issues, uh, stability issues, condensation issues here, because here in Taipei, Taiwan, it's super humid. You never know what could happen for this kind of game. This is extremely tight. This is why these people have to have extreme skills for it. Um, in terms of skills by XA, what do you think about uh, he, he did today? Like starting and continuing in benching from what he had, even though he knew that he had a huge advance uh, against Bull Shooter. Yeah, he was already like sure that he could like, in fact, enter the, let's say, the, the, the big playoff game tomorrow. So that maybe already put him a little bit at ease. And, and Bull Shooter just wanted maybe to defend his title from, from Poitiers that, that he won at the front stop. But yeah, even best friends, like we saw a few days back, they go head to head and they just want to compete. It's like, uh, who, who can be the fastest? Who is the most extreme? So yeah, too bad for Frank that he couldn't do like a, a proper, let's say, game with, with, with XA. Would have been nice if he could put some pressure and that we saw some real competition. Now it was a little bit, yeah, okay. XA in the lead, increasing the lead, and then finally Bullshit at least got something done, but it was like over 1K short. So not good enough. So guys, don't forget the giveaway. Maybe Truthman, you can give him the link again. So we have a giveaway running on, on our Facebook. You can go to overclocking-tv.com forward slash raffle and win one of these awesome prizes. Zadak 511 Max-Z SATA 3 2.5 inches SSD, one of the Intel Core i7 6950X uh, CPU, one of the latest Broadwell eCPU, one of the Seasonic Platinum PSU, the 1050, uh, and one of the limited edition Streetcom BC1 Open Bench Table. Of course, uh, these guys have a lot of things to do tonight. They have to pack, prepare for the game tomorrow. Tomorrow, from 9 a.m. local time until 5 p.m., we'll have all the semi final of the HWBot World Series, the name of the uh, special competition we have here during the HWBot World Tour. The HW US will start tomorrow morning at 9 p.m. Uh, 9 a.m. local time here in Taipei, Taiwan. That's almost the same uh, time in um, in in America. That's going to be 9 p.m. on Friday evening for those people on the uh, New York time zone. My dear League of, that was a tight game. Um, well display of skills by uh, Le, by Extreme Addict, even though he knew that uh, Bullshooter didn't add a score until the very end. We will have to debrief with uh, Bullshooter to know what was happening because he was preparing all this week for this match today. This is um, sad to see for him. But that's part of the game, you know, like everything can happen at this point. Guys, we will uh, take a break and do the debrief later on with the uh, the, over the overclockers. Thank you, my dear friend uh, League of. Sorry for that being late, was, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, man. It was fun. Um, guys, tomorrow, tune in the live because we will be offering some of these giveaways. We actually have an extra SSD from Zadak 511 to uh, award you guys. And uh, we have a lot of things. But don't forget that if you want to have one of these Keep Pushing It t-shirts, you have the red one, the blue one, and the gray one on our Twitch store. You can just look below the stream to find out uh, where you can, uh, how much you can buy them and where you can buy them. We have the, uh, the cut for the guys, the cut for the girls, and we have the hoodie as well. Um, I, I think I will just order a new batch of them because so many people love this t-shirt here. Like, oh yeah, where did you, where did you get it? Like, how did you do it? I challenge you to wear the hoodie like all week long. Next time, next year. I can try to get the hoodie because I have one here, but it's super warm. So I will try to bring it tomorrow. I, I can't promise anything, but I will try. It's your to... problem. <laughs> I will try to bring it tomorrow and to see. So to recap today, we had a uh, bull shooter against Extreme Addict. Extreme Addict is accessing the HWBot World Series semi-final to start tomorrow. Guys, it was a pleasure to do that live with you guys uh, today. We will uh, keep the live on and maybe do a debrief with uh, either bull shooter or Extreme Addict later on uh, in this live. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, keep pushing it. Pushing it.